Well, it's great to have you in the building. I think I've got to start again. I'm going to come out. Say that again. It's great to have you in the building. There we go. I feed off of energy. I want you to smile at me. If you don't like something, don't tell me. Don't tell me. But smile at me. Respond with me. This is a conversation that we're having. I'm not trying to be up here and just talk to myself. That is boring. You'll get bored. I'll get bored. We just won't have a good time. But if we have a conversation, it's, it's going to be a good time, right? Listen, we're on, we're on a series, and this series is it's really big for us. Here's the, here's the cool part. You've heard of this before. If you've been coming for the last couple of weeks, we have a church-wide series that is affecting every single campus, and it's also affecting every single ministry. So here's the cool thing. Our nursery, our kids, our youth, young adults, and our adults, we're all taking part in a series called Me, We, Them. And we have a devotional plan that's attached to this, just affecting everyone. I, I, I absolutely love it. And we're, we, the first week of the me part of the series, we talked about wearing the right jersey for the team that you're on. It's one thing to cheer for a team, but when life starts actually happening, what kind of jersey, whose jersey are you actually wearing? Right? That was the big topic on week one. Week two, we talked about the value that you have. Because you know Christ, because you are a son, a daughter of the most high God, there is value that is placed on you that is very different from what the world says. The world says this. The world says you have to go and be somebody. You have to achieve a certain level of success. And depending on what you're able to offer the world, that is the value that is placed on you. And God flips that. He says, no, 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 no. Because you know me intimately... Because you know my son and because the spirit of God is in you, the value that I think of you is already up here. Nothing can devalue you unless you allow it to. Very, very different. Today is week three of me in particular. And then next week we're going to move on to the we part, okay? So you can stay with us there. But today's topic has really, really... I'm excited about it. It's some pretty basic stuff. Look at your neighbor. Tell them it's basic. It's basic. You, when, when, I was, when I was coming up with like, okay, what are we going to talk about? Just talking to the team. Sometimes, and I was sharing this with the first service, but sometimes we think that uh, me being up here, you know, we throw out these words like righteousness and, and we expect for people to just understand what that is. And that's just not where people are at. You know, if, if you've been coming to church for some time and you understand what I'm talking about, righteousness, I'm, I'm glad. But many times the person that's walking in for the fourth, fifth, sixth time, we start talking about topics and it kind of goes over their head. They don't understand, but we think that they do. And we just kind of wanted to strip everything off. And let's take it back. Let's get really basic with this stuff. And here's, here's where this really, like my eyes were opened up pretty wide, man. Uh, with this scenario, I was walking out of a building and a gentleman, he stops me. He's in his car, okay? So it's really, really funny. I'm walking out and he's kind of in a distance and his car door is kind of open and he's like waving me down. And I'm like, I have no idea who this is. So I'm getting closer to the car. Like, is he calling me? Is he not? And he's, he obviously at some point as I start creeping up, he's like, hey, hey, you come real quick. So I go up to the car and I guess he recognized me from somewhere. And he said, hey, I have a question. It's real fast. Can you help me with something? I said, sure, what's going on? And now he steps out of his car completely, and he has a Bible in his hand, a little Bible. This is, where, this, this is why my eyes were opened. He pulls out his Bible, and he says, listen, I, I accepted Jesus not too long ago, and I'm having some trouble understanding some stuff. I said, okay, what can I help you with, man? He's like, I heard some guy on, on, on YouTube, and he said something like Corinthians 6, and he gets his Bible, and he says, where is that? Where is that? And I'm thinking like, that's where, that's where people are at. And we speak sometimes like we expect people to be up here. It's like, man, people are just walking in the door. They're just getting to know the Father. They're just getting to know the things of God. So we're stripping all that back. And I'm getting down to the basics. Why am I saying that? This is important. 
Because if you're in the building and I start sharing on this topic, you might be thinking, if you're a church veteran, you might be thinking, I already know this. I want you to partner with me in this, okay? And the way, you, the way that you partner with me is there's a lot of people in this place that do not know the things that you might be hearing today that you already know. And when they start coming, I want you to be praying with me. Instead of sitting in the scenes like, this is just for me to receive, turn the attention a little bit. Now I'm kind of calling on my church veterans to say, I'm going to pray even throughout the service, believing that those that are walking in for the first, second, third time are going to understand the topic that is being talked about today. All right? That's a little bit different what I'm asking you to do today. But listen, let me read scripture real quick and open up the topic that we are going to be hitting on. John 14, 15. And here's what it says. It says, if you love me, obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and it doesn't recognize him. But you, you know him. Because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. The title of my message today, in case you're taking notes or care to know, is you need your headset. You need your headset. Do me a favor. Look at somebody next to you. Look at them dip in the eye. It might be awkward. You might be like, I don't even know this person. It's okay. Tell them, ask them, where's your headset? Ask them, where's your headset? Might be operating like christianmingle.com. <laughs> Developing relationships here. Listen, this is how simple I want to break down the day. I, I got to tell you what happens when you come to know when you come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You know, it's one thing, let, let, me, let me take it even to a more simple approach. There's a difference between thinking or just simply believing that Jesus is the Son of God and actively following him with your life. There's a difference. It says in, in Scripture, it says that even the demons believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that there's no benefit for them. So there's an actual pursuit, a relationship with the Father. But here's the cool thing that happens within your life when you, many times people raise their hand, and I shared this just really deep thought that I get sometimes when, I, when I'm up on the stage and I see people raise their hand to receive Jesus. And when I'm up here, I'm like, that is so awesome. Like, I'm glad they're making this decision. It's life-changing. But then... When I walk off this way and I go through the back curtain, I walk through the back over there, you know what starts going on in my mind? I've already told some of you all this. If you happen to be here the last couple of weeks, in my mind, I start thinking, I hope that they stay. Not that they stay at the family church. Because if that's the mentality of like, oh, me and my church, we got it wrong and we got it twisted. I start thinking, I hope that they stay in relationship with the Father. I hope that this changes their life truly that they commit to this because, man, it will change them. It will change their, their, their relationship with their kiddos if they got them. It will change the entirety of their life. I hope that they stay. And there's one, one thing that is so key to understand. When you come to know the Father, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, something very, very powerful happens Listen, you are taken out of darkness and you're brought into light. You're not seen as stained, as blemished. You're seen as white as snow. You're seen, look at this. You are seen as holy. You are seen as worthy. You are seen as valuable. I don't know about you, but I get excited about that kind of stuff because I'm like, yes, that's what I need. Not the old Ricky. That, that guy, uh-uh, we don't want him. But the Ricky in Christ, totally different. Why? It's not that, 
oh, I accepted Jesus Christ, and out of nowhere, all the cavities in my mouth, they're gone. And I don't walk anymore, I float. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's something that happens on the inside. It's a spiritual mark that comes on you that is incredible. It's why you're able to be brought out of darkness and into light. It's why you're seen as holy. You want to know what that is? The Holy Spirit of God comes to reside, not around you, not amongst you, not at the family church. He comes to live in you. And now when God looks at you, he doesn't see the old Ricky that was damaged and blemished. Now he sees Ricky in Christ He's looking at me as holy, and he's looking at me as worthy. We got to understand that basic truth. I'm taking it back to the basics, all right? Ephesians verse 113, I'm going to prove this to you. And now it says, and now you Gentiles, and you might be thinking, who in the world are the Gentiles? Basically, it was anyone that wasn't of Jewish bloodline, okay? But that's not important. That's been kind of abolished. That's not the way we live anymore. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth. The good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own. How and why? I got the answer for you right here. By giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. Verse 14, the Spirit is God's guarantee that he has given us the inheritance that he promised. And that he has purchased us. You're thinking, There's, there was a transaction for me? Absolutely. When Jesus goes to the cross, when he suffers, when he's beaten, when he's hung on the cross, when he dies, when he resurrects, that was a price that was, there was a price put on it. And he purchased you with that act to be what? His own people. I'm going to drive it home one more. Everybody say one more. John 14, verse 16, okay? Because I really want this to stick before we move on. 16 says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. We read this at the beginning. Who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world, it cannot receive him. Because it isn't looking for him and it doesn't recognize him. But, but you know him. Because he lives with you now and later, by the way, we're living in later now. This was before crucifixion. And later today, he will be in you. I'm going to read one more to you. And before I do that, I got to give you some context. I got to share what's going on so that you can really connect, connect with what this, the disciples are thinking and what they're feeling and why Jesus is saying these words. So Jesus is, as you read John 14, 15, and 16, and we just kind of read some of those scriptures right now, as you're reading those scriptures, let me give you timeline. The timeline here is Jesus is about to be taken by his own free will. He's about, about to be taken, put into trial, and crucified, and he knows that it's coming. So what does he do? He gathers his 12 disciples, and he's teaching them over and over and over again. He's teaching them. John 14, 15, and 16, they mean something. Now, this is a very personal thing, okay? I'm not saying that it's more important. But to me, they, they stick out a little bit more than John 1 and 2 and 3. Why? Because if you've ever had a loved one or a friend that's on their way out, of this life, and they got some final words to share, don't those words carry a lot of weight? Oh, they carry a lot of weight. You, you want to lean in. What do you got to say? What's on your heart? What's on your mind? Talk. You got all of my focus and all of my attention. In John 14, 15, 16, that is what is taking place. Jesus knows he's about to face the cross and he's pulling in his team. He's saying, I got to share these final things with you. And he keeps talking about a topic that is so important. They hadn't experienced it before. So he's trying to go into some like real deep teaching. And he's talking about the Holy Spirit. And he's telling them, hey, listen, I'm getting ready to leave. 
I'm getting ready to go through something. I'm getting ready to be taken from you. But I don't want you to be scared and I don't want you to be sad because it's actually better that I leave. Now, listen, put yourself for a second. Whenever you read the Bible, it really helps to understand it and feel what it's communicating if you read it with your five physical senses. So put yourself in that environment. Jesus, I mean, I just picture him kind of being outside. I picture him being around, amongst trees and there might be some people walking around. Oh, but, but the 12 are right here. They're close. And he's telling them this is about to happen. And you're one of the disciples and you're thinking, what do you mean it's better that you leave me? I, I have seen you physically raise the dead. Jesus, what do you mean? I was on the ship in the middle of the Sea of Galilee when the storm hit out of nowhere. And we thought we were going to die. And you were under the ship. That's what believed, scholars believe he was under somewhere. And you were asleep. And we woke you up saying, Jesus, we're about to die. And you woke up and went and calmed the storm with your voice, with your authority. What do you, what do you mean it's better that you leave? What would be better for us, your disciples, What in this world can be better than having you physically present with us? Jesus, it doesn't make any sense. And Jesus spoke about something. He spoke about the Holy Spirit of God. Look at what he says. I'm going to confirm some of the things that I'm saying here. John 16, verse 5. And he says... But now I am going away. I'm going away to the one who sent me. And not one of you is asking where I am going. Verse 6 is the attitude I was telling you about. Instead, you grieve because of what I've just told you. Verse 7, but in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Because if I don't, the advocate won't come. The advocate is the Holy Spirit. So he's saying, John, Peter, Matthew, my disciples, you got to understand, in order for you to experience, here's the crazy thing, you and I experience that today. If you are a believer in Christ, if you're of the faith, you have that Holy Spirit that Jesus died for. And he's telling them, it's like, you don't get it. You don't understand it yet. But when I leave, and I have to leave, Because when I leave and the promise is fulfilled and there is a new covenant that is established with you, you're going to, not only is the Holy Spirit going to come and and be amongst you, no, he's going to be in you. And it's going to change everything. Not just change something for one person or two people or five people to change things for humanity. Powerful stuff. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to go back in time with me. Go back in time with me. I'm going to share a story, but I want you to relate with me on this one, okay? I'm going to go back to a high school time period in my life. In high school, I really, really like to play video games. Anybody in this place have kids or even yourself where you play video games or used to play video games? Put your hand. Tell me where my friends are at real quick. Real quick. You I see my friends. All right, right, I'm not alone. There's plenty. Awesome. You're going to connect with this well, I think. Listen, back in the day, I loved loved playing video games. So you put on FIFA, put on Madden, put on Call of Duty, whatever. We were going to throw down. It was going to be a good time. Me and my friends would throw these headsets on, and we were communicating, just throwing down for hours on end. But there was one particular game, one very specific game Till this day, it is my favorite game of all time, and that game is Halo 3. <laughs> Woo! Where you at, man? There we go. Halo 3. Halo 3 is my favorite game of all time. Still is. And there's a very, very specific reason why it is my favorite game. We were pretty good at it. Not incredible, 
I was decent at it. But man, this is the kind of game that I would stay up, no lie, high school days, okay? I'd stay up till 3, 4 in the morning on Friday. Some of y'all have kids. You're like, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. They stay up, yeah. 3, 4 in the morning, no problem. You bust open the chips and the Coke, and we're going to have a great night. That's that, that, that was it, right? But the reason that I really, really liked this game is because we had, I had a friend named Eli. Now, Eli had this gift, man. I don't know how or what. But any game that dude touched, he was just great at. Incredible. But Halo 3, he was, I'm, I'm talking about another level. This guy, Eli, I'm talking you up. You're in Arizona right now, but I love you. This guy would actually get paid by MLG, Major League Gaming, to travel the nation and play Halo. He was ranked number 32 in the nation. That's a pretty big deal. Guess what? Eli's on my team. <laughs> and we would be playing, right? And then, oh, it was always the best feeling. His name was Dwaz Woot on, on Xbox. I don't know why, but that's his name, okay? I still remember that. Anytime I saw Dwaz Woot is online, we're all like, yes, the Savior has come. He's here. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. You know why it's going to be a good time? Because I know we're not going to lose. I know it's going to be a night full of victories. But there was one thing. Why was it such a game changer? It wasn't that, yes, Eli was good at the game. And when he was on our team of four, it made a difference. But you want to know what made the biggest difference of all? You see, when you play, if you're going to do this right, man, you got to get your headset. That's a, you, 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 can't, you can't successfully play with your friends and actually win if you don't have your headset. You got to have it. And when we played the game, you know, you put this thing on and you were able to bring the mic down and talk to each other and it was, it was fun. But what made all the difference in the world when Eli was on the team is this man, this gentleman, this guy was so skilled he knew exactly what we had to do as a team to win. So he was yelling out commands. He was telling us, hey, on this part, I want you to go left. What are we going to do? Yes, sir. Whatever you say, Mr. Number 32 in the nation, you tell us what to do. Hey, on this part, I want you to go right. Hey, we're about to come up to this part. I want you to just stop. Just let me do my thing. Just stay back. <laughs> no problem. I'm going to drink my Coke and eat my chips. What made the biggest difference for us as a team is the communication that we had with Eli. He knew exactly what to do. You know, when I was praying for this message, when we talk about the, and I'm going to leave this headset on for a while because I want this to just, every time you see a, a, a headset, I want you to think of this message. But I was praying, God, the, the the topic of the Holy Spirit, y'all, it's so vast. It's so big. The Holy Spirit is the advocate. The Holy Spirit is our guide. The Holy Spirit is the great encourager. Oh, man, you could go on and on. Honestly, we could seriously have a whole series that would span several weeks, maybe even a couple of months, just talking about the role of the Holy Spirit. And I was praying, God, Give me direction for this part. What is the most important thing for this moment, for the congregation now? And what I felt in my heart, what I, was, what I felt moved to speak on, I felt the Holy Spirit say, I want you to speak on the communication that I have with my people. Because the Holy Spirit, y'all, it's like a headset. He's wanting to communicate the things that you might not know the things that are coming up ahead, the things that we have to watch out for, the things that we're supposed to pray. And the reason I even broke the message down this way is first we have to understand and realize that there is a Holy Spirit that is in you. And now the Holy Spirit, let me share scripture with you guys and then I'll, I'll, I'll kind of share what I, got to, what I got to say right now. But John 16, 13, check this out. It says, when the spirit of truth comes, here's the cool thing, he's already came, he already came. He will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority. 
What does that mean? That means that the Holy Spirit isn't trying to think of, of what to say to you in moments where you need to hear from the Father. The Holy Spirit is going to the Father for direction. He's getting the inside information, the inside scoop. And now that Holy Spirit is coming over to you and saying, hey, here's what you got to do. Here's what's on the Father's heart. Oh, you're praying for direction for your life? I, I speak on behalf of the Father. It's that line of connection that you have with the Father. And he wants to speak to you. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things. Look at that. He will declare to you the things that are to come. The things that they might not know. The things that might be confusing for them. So we've established a couple of things. Here's the two things that we've talked about. First, that the Holy Spirit is present, that he's real. And he's alive today. The second thing is that he's here to guide us. He's here to communicate. He's here to help. And here's a question that might be coming to your mind. The question that might be coming to your mind right now is, okay, that's great, but, but how do I hear his voice? How do I know it's the spirit of God? I got two things that I want to share with you guys in, in doing our absolute best to explain this so that you can walk out of this room equipped more than you were when you first came in today. Here's, here's the first thing I want to talk about. Number one, it's going to be on the screens for you, and if you want to write this down, I encourage you to do so. The first thing is his voice. The voice of the Holy Spirit, the voice that you hear through your spiritual headset is always going to line up with the Bible. Every time. Every, it will never contradict what the word of God has to say. So sometimes we come up on the stage and you hear preachers of every color and every stripe. And they'll say, there's two things that you got to do. You got to read your Bible and you got to pray. Ever heard that before? It's not because we heard somewhere, like we heard somewhere or we read in the book that's like, hey, if you're going to step on the stage, you have to tell people that they got to pray and they got to read their Bible. No, no. This is because we want to help establish a connection, right? With the whole devotional plan for the series, it wasn't because we thought, hey, this might be a good idea. We're, you know, we're a church and church is supposed to talk about this. So let's kind of just throw it out there, throw a net and see what happens. No, there was a lot of intention behind even creating a devotional plan for this. Why? Let me share a quick story that I think is going to help you connect with what I'm talking about here. There was a, a long time ago, years back, I had just come to know the Lord. I was maybe about 20 years old. I had been coming to church for maybe about a year. Okay, so I'm still trying to figure out, honestly, I'm still trying to figure out this headset thing, how to work it. And I ran into a situation with an individual, and it was a pretty heated moment. Have you ever had an argument where you think you were right, every hand should go up. You guys are lying, right? It's like, yeah, I've had lots of those. In this moment, Liz, you might be, you're going you're to hear me and you're going to be like, eh, I don't know. This situation, really, I look back at it, even in the moment, I don't see where I went wrong. I basically stood there and got cussed out. That was the situation. And I, I'm, man, I'm upset. My face is fired up. Anybody like, you feel heat down your body when these moments happen, right? You know, don't raise your hand. You know what I'm talking about? And I'm in my room and I'm pacing back and forth. And I'm going back and forth. And I'm having those, you know, those arguments that you have when the person's not there. And you're arguing, I should have said this and I should have, I should have done that. And that would have been a really, really good one. Can we go back in time and say it? I'll say it next time I see them, right? I'm pacing back and forth and I don't know where I turn my language. I turn now, I'll get my headset on. And I'm praying about this. I truly am. So I'm pacing back and forth. I'm like, God, what, what just happened? Like, that wasn't right. Holy Spirit, convict their heart. I pray that they repent. <laughs> and I felt the Holy Spirit tell me something. He said, go and ask them for forgiveness. I'm thinking, wrong channel. God, wrong, wrong one. That's the other chat, not this one. And I'm going back and forth. I'm thinking, what? Again, I am, I had just come to know the things of God, y'all. 
Still trying to understand this. Not that, we've ever, that we ever arrive, but it was just very fresh. I was trying to understand the word. I was just taking my first steps in all this. And as I'm praying, look at what happens. The Holy Spirit tells me, go and ask him for forgiveness. I'm thinking, God, I did nothing wrong. And then scripture starts coming. What the Holy Spirit speaks will always align with the word of God. That's why it's important that we know the word of God. Because you have something to rely on because here's what happens. Where's the battle? The battle in our starts where, God, is this really you or is this in my head? I'm not quite sure. So in that moment, what I was able to do is I take what I believed was the Holy Spirit telling me, go and ask for forgiveness and then scripture starts coming because I'm weighing it. I'm like, God, I don't know if this is you. I think this is just me going kind of crazy. And then scripture says, though, it says to bless those who persecute you. <sighs> what? Yeah, I remember that one, God. It's, it's, it's written on my heart now. I remember that one. And then other ones start coming to my mind. If you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven. Whew. Yeah, I'm weighing it on the word. What I feel the spirit of God is speaking to me. And as I weigh it on the word, it resonates. It aligns. God, this is you. And then you'll always see the fruit of it. You'll always see the fruit. I went over to this individual. I felt dumb. I felt like I'm not supposed to be doing this still. But I feel like I heard from God. I go to them and I say, would you forgive me for what just happened? And they look at me and they're like, no, would you forgive me? I'm sorry. And I'm thinking, that was you. Oh, God, I see it. You, huh, you're like Eli. You knew what the enemy was trying to do. You were telling me to go left. You knew the game plan already. And here I am trying to formulate things and trying to, trying to come up with some kind of strategy and game plan. And this, you'd never ask me to do that. Your strategy is, hey, listen to my voice. What am I telling you? Point number two in this. Because I got a time frame that I got to I gotta stay in. Point number two is real simple. But it's be intentional. Be intentional. If you're writing down notes, write that down. You know, there's so many things that pull on you. I was reading not too long ago a stat that says that the average American now, the average American has about 4,000 to 10,000 advertisements that are thrown at them daily, every day. Now, you add all that to just personal life, and the boss needs this, the coworker needs that, the team needs this, the kids need that, the spouse, the home, the bill, the blah, the blah. It's so vast, and I'm not saying, I'm not wanting to hit on all that kind of stuff. What I am saying is it's very easy for your attention to be given out to everything. It's hard to cut down and try to be intentional with the time that you do have. I'm going to share scripture with you in just a moment. It's going to resonate with what I'm saying. But there's an approach that I take. Everybody's is different, y'all. But I want to paint the picture. Again, I want to be really, really practical with what I am saying. Because I want you to just hang on to what I'm saying and apply it to your life. This is what it looks like for me personally. I don't come, it's not at the family church. It's not here at the altar. It's not even in an office. It's not those things. Where I hear from me personally, where I really connect is I would get home. Wife and child, they're asleep. And I sit on the couch, always in the same spot. It's my spot. And I'll just put some worship music on and I start praying. There are times where I have music. There are times where I don't. But what am I doing? I am being very intentional. God, I want to hear from you. What am I doing? Example. I am being intentional with, I want to hear directly from you. How does he speak through us? Through his Holy Spirit. And then I'll open up my Bible and I'll read. 
and I'll close it and I'll pray and I'll meditate on what it's saying and I'll open it up and I'll read and I'll close it and I pray. It's this back and forth communication that I'm having. And sometimes, do you want to know when some of the messages come for Sunday mornings or Wednesday nights or wherever it may be? When I'm being intentional. Just yesterday, oh, I'm real excited about this one. I don't tell you what it is yet. But I was sitting and I was just praying, being intentional, and God just dropped something on me. Here's what you're going to speak on next. Oh, man, that's good. Write it down real quick. Actually, on my phone, text it to myself. Here's what I'm talking about next. Here's what's on my heart. How the Spirit dropped it because I was intentional. Are you seeing this? It's, sometimes we complicate it and it's like, well, I got I to gotta have this person pray for me and I got to get counseling and I got to that. And I gotta, no, strip that away for a second. Get back to the basics. Be intentional with your time. This is important and this is key because you know what? When a situation comes your way and I'm going to share a story that's going to help, underst- you're going to understand this. But when life comes your way, Do you, many times, the the time that you have to respond to a situation, you got seconds. You don't have five minutes like, there's a situation, this thing's on fire. Real cool, give me five minutes, I'll be right back. I don't, no. It's like, I need something right now. Your kid's in trouble. Your kid's acting whack. And then if we're not in tune in communication with the Holy Spirit, you know what begins to act out? Your own mind. Your own flesh, your own desires, Ricky tries to make it happen. There's a time, i got to share this story with you guys. But I am, I'm a big kind of, I guess you could say like justice kind of guy. Like, no, there's got to be justice. It's not always good. In the past, I've, I think I've done two citizens arrests because of this. Hit and runs kind of situations. Crazy. But this one particular time, man, about four or five years ago, I'm driving down real near uh, 2nd Street and Pecan, 495. And let me, let me paint the picture here. I'm on the left lane. There's a vehicle on the right lane. And that car left a big old gap between him and the car in front of him. And I could have gotten to wherever I needed to get to faster if I get on the right lane. So what does Ricky do? I, I want to get on the right lane. I want to go faster. And as I switch over, the car that was parked far back creeps up, and we hit. If it was his fault, my fault, honestly, I don't know. But we crashed. So I pull over to the side. I get out of the car. I go over to the driver just to make, you know, your fault, my fault. I don't know. Let's just assess the situation, make sure everybody's okay. So as I get closer to the driver, I, start, I notice something. He's looking at me, and immediately I know this guy's sky high, man. He is barred out. He is barely functioning. He can't complete a sentence. And now I'm thinking, oh, that's what happened. That's why this happened. This dude was sky high, hit me, get out the car. Like, we got to settle it. Not like, let's fight, right? But we got to settle this. You cannot drive in the condition that you are in. Just this guy. Then I noticed he opened the door, okay? And I'm talking to him. He closes the door and rolls up the window. And I see him put the car in drive. Just this guy thinking absolutely not. (laughs) Ricky runs up to the front of the car. And I'm standing there like, you're not doing this. You ain't leaving. So I'm staring him down. And he's looking at me. And I'm thinking, this guy might be crazier than me right now. (laughs) I see him again. Shift it down. This guy's taking off. What does the guy do? The guy takes off. Where am I? In front of his car. <laughs> I jump on his hood. Not because I wanted to. There was nowhere else to go. Really, there wasn't. So there's Pastor Ricky on 2nd Street and 495 on some guy's hood. Hey, TFC, what's going on? Just trying to deal with the situation here real quick. About... 10, 15 meters in, and this guy's picking up speed, man. I'm like, either I jump off or something, I I, I could potentially die, for real. So I roll off his car, and I'm there in the middle of 2nd Street in Pecan. 
I run back to my car thinking all sorts of stupid, really. By the time I get back in my car, the guy is gone. I don't even know which direction he went in. He's gone. Now, check this out. I'm in my car and I am upset. I'm driving around trying to find this guy. Didn't find him. I'm letting you in, man. I'm letting you in. The reality. Now, when everything kind of settles down, where does Ricky want to turn to now? Hey, God. I'm thinking, God, what just happened? Like, why did that happen? Got to find this guy. My car's damaged. There has to be justice. And the Holy Spirit speaks something to me. Very simple, but it left me sitting in my car in silence. He says, I was trying to talk to you. I was trying to tell you to get away. I was trying to communicate with you, but you allowed your flesh to take over. You turned off your headset. Life comes really, really fast. And it's important that we stay in tune with what God is trying to tell you and not try to handle things on your own because it is so easy, church. It's so, you know what I'm talking about. When a situation comes or something is said, what wants to flare up? You, your mind, your will, your emotions. But what is it that's supposed to be on the forefront of the way that we communicate and the way that we talk? What is God saying? If we could operate this way, church, I'm, I'm challenging you to do something. I'm challenging you to go from this level of how we live. And a lot of how we live, I'm talking to everyone right now, man. If you don't know Christ, you got to know him, by the way. Because without Christ, you don't even have access to this. But I am challenging people of faith in this place. How do I know this is real? How do I know that a lot of people are just not wearing the headset? Because the first thing that people want to do when a situation hits or times of trouble come, let me start calling people. Let me start calling the church. I need to talk to a pastor. I need this. I need that. And we're here for you. We love you. But I'm trying to, I'm challenging you to grow in the things of God. Because God, there's a line of communication that you have before it's anybody on staff or any pastor. It's with the Father. And now I've come to understand something. When I have a a, a conversation with someone and they're going through something, I I slowly kind of turn it and I ask them questions like, hey, tell me what you've been praying Hey, what does God have to say about this? Have you asked him? No, not really. That's why I'm here. I'm here to hear. I'm here to get direction. I'm like, time out, my friend. And I'm going to say with all the love in my heart, it's not my job to hear on behalf of God for you. I'm here to teach truth. And I'm here to try to equip and edify and give direction to some extent But the communication that has to happen for you personally, it's with the Father that I can't step in and make it happen. It has to be you. If we can begin to operate that way, friends, the communication between your family, the communication with your workplace, the communication with your friends, the way that you deal with situations, oh, man, it starts to take a dramatic turn, and it's a beautiful thing to see. But to even make that possible, you have to know Jesus Christ. you got to know him. you got to have a relationship with him. Would you do me a favor and bow your heads and close your eyes real quick with me? Last thing we're going to do this morning, this afternoon really, This part is so key. Man, this is the most important part of service. This is going to be the most important day of many people in this place's lives. It's the day that you come to know who Jesus is and everything changes. Holy Spirit comes and lives within you. And now you have access to what the Father has to say. Incredible thing. Listen, if you're in this place and you don't know who Jesus is, you got to know him. 
You want, I shouldn't say it like that. You want to know him. You want to know him. If you're in this place, and if I asked you the question, if your life was over today for whatever reason, would heaven be your next home or would it be hell? If you can't answer that question with certainty in your heart, you need Jesus. And you want Jesus, trust me. If you're in this place and you need to make that decision today. If you're watching online right now through a screen and you need to make that decision today, I want you to just type it right there in the chat. I accept Christ today. Let us know. We want to know. For those of y'all in the physical room, if you want to make that decision, would you do me a favor and raise your hand for me? Say, yeah, that's me. I see it. Yep. Hands going up. Yep. Yep. See them all over the place. Put them up real high for me. Real high. I really, really do care about who I'm praying for. I see you right there in the middle. I see you in the very, very back. I see you in the back over here. Beautiful. That is incredible. I see you, little man. Yeah. Bible says something real simple. It says that when we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, that he's king, when we believe it in our hearts, that's that move of faith, that Jesus comes to live with us, the Holy Spirit comes to reside in us, and heaven is your next home. Beautiful move. If you're in this place, I want you to pray this prayer with me. If you've accepted Jesus before, I want you to pray this prayer with me regardless to encourage those that are making the decision today. If you're watching online, wherever you may be, I want you to pray this with us. Would you say, Father, I thank you for Jesus who left heaven, who left glory, who left everything to come to this earth to show us the way and ultimately to give his life for me. And Father, on the third day, I know that he rose again. And right now, I ask that you come into my heart, that you forgive me for my sin, and that you save me right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.